You can grab the link to the starter code in the description if you want to follow along. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video as I will be giving you some challenges that you can try yourself. You can get project ideas like this straight to your inbox of tips, starter code and challenges that you can try by going to subscribe.jschris.com. Okay, let's get into it. If you open up the starter code and go to app.js, you'll see that I have given you a list of questions. So this is just an array. So our first goal is to take the question data from this array and display it on the screen. So if we go down to our JSX, you'll see that we have some hard coded questions and answers here. We're just going to take the first question and display it dynamically on the screen just to get things going. Okay, so we're going to remove this hard-coded text and we're going to open our curly braces and type questions, open our square brackets since we want to access the first item in the questions array, which we get from up here. And then we're going to type dot question text. So all we're doing here is we're taking the first item in the questions array, which is this one, and we're taking the question text. So what is the capital of France? will appear on our running example here, and it does. Next, we want to take a similar approach to the answer options. So we're gonna remove these hard-coded buttons, and then we'll, we'll use the map function to iterate over the answer options for a given question. So again, we're just gonna take the first one for now. So we'll type questions, and it'll be the first item in the array, and then we'll type answer options. So this will give us the answer options array here. And as you can see, each item in this array has the answer text and a value that tells us is this answer correct or not. So all we want to do now is display each answer text as a button on our UI. Back in our JSX, we'll do questions to get the first one, dot answer options to get the answer options array, and then we'll do dot map because we want to iterate over this array and get the answer text from the object. Remember the map function takes a function which gives us the current object or item that it's currently on which we'll just call answer option and this will be a function and we'll open our braces and then we will just do button open and close JSX tags and inside this we're going to say answer option dot answer text. So let's save this and see what this does. So as you can see these buttons have updated with the options taken from the array. Remember the map function blips over the array and gives us the the current item in the form of a variable. So the first time it runs, we're going to get this object, which has answer text New York. The second time the map function runs, we're going to get this object, which has answer text London and so on. Now that we have access to this variable, we can use the dot notation to get access to those properties that we just seen. This is going to run four times. Each time it's just going to display a button and the answer text is going to be taken from the current object on that map function, which is why we get four buttons. If we wanted to add a fifth option up here, we could just by copying and pasting and then we could say somewhere like Sydney and see if UI would update automatically. So this is quite a cool approach to take as it makes things very dynamic. Okay, so notice how we're taking the first question from the array, but if we change zero to one for the question and let's see if it'll change the question text to take the second object here. So as you can see the question text for the first index, which is the second position because array always start at zero, remember? So this is zero and this object is one and it's gonna take this question text and then we can do the same for the answer to get the options for the second question. What we want to do is use a state object to hold which question the user is currently on and update this when the answer button is clicked. The best way to do that is to store a state value which holds this value. We'll then add an on click event to increment this number by one anytime the buttons are clicked. So go ahead and create a state object just above the return statement. We'll call it con current question, set current question. And this is going to be equal to use state with a value of zero since we always want to start at the first question in the array, which is going to be what is the capital of France. So now down in our JSX, we can get rid of this zero and paste in the current question and we can do the same for the answer section. So this is doing the same thing, only now things are a bit more dynamic. So we've got a state variable called current question. This holds the current number that the user is currently on. Down in here, we're just saying, okay, go and get the question number from the array, display the question and display the list of answer options for that question. So as you can see, if we go up into our current question and we change this from zero to one, this will change to the next question and answer options. And if we change it to two, it'll go to the next question and so on. So we'll change this back to zero for now. Okay, so now we have a dynamic UI, which is pretty cool. The next thing we want to do is change the current question by one anytime the button is clicked. So to do that, we will do a new function called handle answer button click. And in here, we're just going to do const next question. It's going to be equal to whatever the current question number is plus one. So this is going to be current question plus one. Next, all we want to do is change the state object to whatever the next question is going to be. So to do this, we just do set current question and it's going to be next question. And if we click this, it should take us to the next question and it doesn't. Okay, let's have a look. We have to add this to our button. So down in our button, we'll do on click equals open some braces and just paste in the function name just like that. Okay, so let's try again. Now, if we click any of these buttons, it should take us to the next question. 
and it does. Just to recap, we have a button click called handle answer button click, which is a function. When this function is called, we take the current question number, which is initially zero. We're going to add one to it. We're going to set the current question to whatever it is. The first time we click a button is going to go from one to zero. Then we set that, which means our current question is at one, which means React will render the component again. This time when it renders, the current question is going to be one which means it's going to go to the questions array and it's going to take the second object since array started zero. So this is zero and this is one. It'll take that object and it'll take the question text from that object and it'll take all the answers and display them on the UI. Okay, so this works until we get to the end in which case we get this big scary error that says can't read question text of undefined. Okay, so what's happening then? So if we look at our handle answer button click function, we are incrementing the number by one and then we're setting this to state we're then using the current question number to access the array and pull out the different objects and properties that we need. The problem is once we get to a certain point, this number is going to be five, but our array only has four items, which means down in our JSX, whenever we try to access the fifth element in the question array, it's going to say, well, I, I can't find anything here, so I'm just going to break. What we need to do is add a check to make sure we don't go over the total questions in the array. So if we go back up into our handle answer button click function, what we want to do is type if next question, is less than questions dot length then we'll set the current question we'll just do an else to show that this work and do an alert to say you have reached the end of the quiz okay so we'll save this and hopefully this comes back and it does so let's try this this time we'll just click through to the end of the quiz and it says you have reached the end of the quiz so this condition the way it's just added basically says if the next number is less than the total number of questions that we currently have go ahead and update to the next question else we've gotten to the end of the quiz so just do an alert for now okay so instead of showing the alert what we want to do is show the score screen if we look at the jsx you'll notice that i've put in the markup on here for you we just need to replace false with some sort of logic this is a perfect thing that we can put in state what we'll do is add another state object call true score and set true score it's going to be able to use state and this time it's going to be a boolean which we will set to false initially so down in here then what we'll do is remove the false and paste in true score okay so everything will stay the same for now but if we change our true score date value to initialized to be true you'll see that the score screen will show this is because this code is wrapped in a ternary basically means if true score is true then we want to show the score panel in other words all this stuff else if true score is false then we're going to show this stuff which is our question panel effectively we want to update the show score variable when user has reached the end of the quiz which we have written the logic for up here so we just need to replace this alert with a call to change the set show score variable so if we get rid of this alert and then we'll do set show score is equal to true and we'll just format our code and save and we'll change this true score back to false because we don't want to show the score initially and then if we click through to the end it'll say just go over one out of four so this is this code down here that has just been rendered okay so just to recap what we're doing here is anytime user clicks a button we're going to increment the next question or show the next question once user has reached the end of the quiz we're going to show the score panel so we do that by changing the state variable up here from false to true that causes react to re-render and down in here the ternary will fire again and since shoe score is going to be true this first panel will appear any other time up to that when shoe score is false the second stuff will appear okay so the next task is to hold the score somewhere in our app and increment this value anytime the user gets the answer correct Okay, so the logical place to put this is within the hand handle answer button click function as this is the point we know if the user has clicked the right button or not or the correct answer. Remember, anytime we iterate over the buttons, we're getting an object in the form of an answer option, which is going to be any of this stuff, which means we not only get access to the answer text, we also get access to if this is the correct answer or not. So anytime we render a button, we also know at this point in the code, okay, is this going to be true? Or is this going to be true? Is this going to be true? Or is this going to be true? We're able to pass that flag or that Boolean value to our handle answer button click function. This Boolean is what we'll use to help us increment our score. So down in our button, we will change it so that it accepts a function and we're going to pass a argument to handle answer button click which is going to be answer option dot is correct so this is correct comes from the object that we're currently on as we map over the array of answer options okay so now that we're passing the value to our function we just have to go to our function and accept an argument called is correct next we'll just add some logic in here to say correct is correct equals equals true then we'll just show an alert to say this answer is correct. Okay, so we'll save this and we'll try again. So what is the capital of France? It's going to be Paris and you can see we get this alert. Okay, so we don't need an else statement in here as we always want this code to run. We always want to increment to the next question or true to score depending on the state of our app regardless of if the user got the answer correct or not just to recap when we iterate over the buttons we're going to pass the is correct flag for that answer option 
to the handle answer button click function. So this is either going to be true or false. In our handle answer button click function, we read in this value and then we check if it's true. If it is true, then we display the alert. So the answer option dot is correct. It just comes from our array for any given question. So, okay, so next we actually want to save the score based on if the user got the answer correct. Again, this is a perfect thing to put in state. We'll take a new line and create a new state variable called score and set score. This is going to default to zero and down in our handle answer button click function, instead of showing us alert, what we want to do is do set score and it's going to be whatever the current score is plus one and we'll delete the alert. Now, if we go into our JSX, into the score section here. Instead of having this hard coded one, all we want to do is delete this, open our braces and type score. So this is going to be dynamic based on whatever the state variable for score is at the end of the quiz. Okay, so now if we run through the questions, we'll do, we'll get some of these right and we'll get some of these wrong. And that says you got two out of four. So if we try it again, and let's try and get everything right this time. And hooray, I got four to four. So just a quick run free for this one. Any Anytime we click a button, we pass whether that is the correct option or not to our function. Our function is going to check if it was correct, and it's going to increment the score by one. At the end of the quiz, the show score is going to be true, which shows our score section. And we dynamically display the score. One last thing before we wrap up our quiz app is that you notice this, our current question is always at one. So it doesn't matter which question we're on. It's always going to show one. That's because it's still hard coded down in here. All we want to do is get rid of the one and dynamically display our current question. So it's going to be current question and we'll do plus one. So remember the plus one is needed as arrays always start at zero. So we want to do plus one so that it shows the correct question for the user. If we didn't have plus one, this would be zero and it would stop at three. Okay, so if you made it this far, here are some challenges that you can try yourself. So currently there's no way to reset the quiz. If we go to the very end, it just says you scored one out of four, but there's no button to take us back to the start to have to refresh the page. A good thing to add would be to add a button. Here it says reset quiz and whenever it's clicked it should reset the game and take us back to the start. So a tip to get started here would be to think about our different state variables. So at each point on the app the variable is going to represent whatever question is being shown and what answers have been selected correctly. Resetting these variables would be a good place to start. The second thing to try if you get that far is to save the previous scores. So I should see the previous scores that I got each time I played the game. So if I go back to the start using the button and I click through, this list should grow with the scores. So a tip here would be to think about how you would store the previous stores in state and display them in a div or display them somewhere in your app. Okay, that wraps it up for this one. Thanks for watching.